Hey everybody, I thought I would take this opportunity to tell you about my bike. Let's get into it. So this is an open up frame set. Uh, it's a size extra large, which I found that I needed for these longer endurance kinds of rides because it's got a, a higher stack uh, and it enabled me to put a little bit shorter stem on it, have a higher stack, and it fits me really well. Uh, as far as, uh, let's start with the front end. I have an 80 millimeter stem on there. I have uh, about uh, 50 millimeters worth of risers here, and the stem is pointing up. Uh, the stem is connected to salsa, cow chipper, aluminum bars that are size 42 from hood to hood, and they have a flare in the, in the drops. And I really like uh, these particular bars because they don't make my hands numb and they're super comfortable. Um, I have zip non aero bars on here. I jokingly say non aero because you know, my handlebar is pretty high already uh, in relation to my seat. And then I have some extensions on, on the aero bars itself to raise it up even more. So it makes for just a real comfortable third riding position or fourth actually. So I can go, I can go here. I can go here, I can go here, or I can ride here, or here. Um, and so I move around constantly on these longer rides to, to stay comfortable. Um, the brake levers are SRAM Force with SRAM Force calipers. Uh, the drivetrain, I messed around, I, I played around with the drivetrain quite a bit before this ride because I wanted to get it right. So uh, originally, I had Campagnolo Eckar group set on here, which I love that group set, but it just didn't allow enough, uh, wide enough range of gearing for the, the lower end that I need for some of these hills with the loaded bike. So I took the Eckar off, put the SRAM on, um, went with the Eagle Access rear derailleur and 1052 cassette. And then um, a 40 tooth front chain ring, single chain ring. So it's a 12 speed single, single ring bike. Um, and as far as the cranks go, I started with 175 mountain bike cranks because I had taken them off another bike that I had. And they worked okay, but the Q factor was pretty wide. And uh, this bike was designed for a, a road crank set. So I wanted to take advantage of that. Um, so I bought the SRAM Rival Cranks. They're an aluminum crank. And I talked uh, to Dan Mazza at MTCX about crank length. Because I've been reading a lot about this and I know that it's kind of uh, been on, in a lot of bike fitting videos and that kind of stuff lately. but lower crank length does a number of things. Uh, number one, it reduces your hip impingement when you're on the top of the stroke. And um, I felt like that that would be, that would be a good solution for me. So I, I did that. I, I, bought, I went from 175 millimeter cranks to 170 millimeter cranks. Um, and I've been really enjoying that. I think it's been a really good decision. Uh, the pedals are time attack pedals. These are to number four pedals, so lower in the line. I've used these pedals for for quite a while now, a couple of, a couple of years, and I've bought more expensive ones. I think I bought eights at one point. They're like, I don't understand the time pedal system because the weight, <laughs> pay a heck of a lot more money uh, for almost the same weight. And I don't really see a difference in anything. Um, some of the more expensive ones have an adjustment on there for how hard or soft it is to get out of the pedals. There's like a three position adjustment. 
and on one of my pedals that broke. So I'm just going with the cheap ones. Um, I bought the SRAM XX1 chain and I'm hoping that it lasts me from coast to coast. If not, I'll hit a bike shop somewhere and uh, buy another one. Um, I'm using an Envy carbon seat post, a Selly Italia Boost SLR saddle, which, um, you know, saddles are, uh, you know, there's a love-hate love -hate relationship with saddles, but as far as saddles go, this one is awesome. I, I've had leather saddles in the past, I've had all different kinds of saddles, and this one is the most comfortable saddle that I've ever used. And I think this is a, a narrower one as well. Um, anyway, it just works great. I have a um, Hunt Four Seasons. They're the Hunt. These wheels are the Four Season All Road Disc. Uh, I bought these because they fit my budget. Uh, they were aluminum, which I wanted, and they had a higher max uh, weight limit than the other hunt wheels, uh, road wheels that I had. I didn't want to have any problems with uh, spokes breaking and that kind of stuff. Uh, I wanted aluminum wheels because of this pedal cell on the front. So the great thing about this is that when I need to charge um, external battery or a uh, phone or uh, my Wahoo, I can engage the, I can engage it, and it rubs against the wheel, and it produces power. Um, and then when I don't want to have that additional drag, I don't need to charge anything, I pull it away from the wheel, and no additional drag. It's awesome. I've only tested this. I actually haven't had to use it yet on this trip. Uh, and because of that, I'm considering sending it back. <laughs> um, but it does give me the peace of mind to like, use my phone for Google Maps and that kind of stuff while I'm riding, um, to use my lights while I'm riding and know that I can always charge those up on the fly if I need to, which is great. So I haven't decided that I'm just in the back. Uh, I do have a Wahoo unit zip tied to my stem here. Um, I have a, a, a bladder have a bladder. Here's the host for it. It goes down through my frame bag and my bladder is down here. It holds 1.5 liters and then I have this water bottle here and I have a second water bottle here. And so far that's been enough to get me across the desert, you know, 80, 80 odds miles or so at a time. Um, I also have, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab the camera then. All right, so there's my Wahoo I was talking about. Uh, this is my cockpit here. This is a quad lock that I attached my phone to. And so uh, when I am navigating with, with Google Maps or whatever, or the, actually even the Adventure Cycling app, it's right here in front of me. Uh, which is really cool. The only thing is it's kind of tricky to get my phone in there and clicked in while I'm writing and it can be a challenge when I want to take my phone out and you know photograph something or video something while I'm writing on the fly. So there's room for improvement there. Um, this light outbound outbound lighting light um, it is a USB charged <clears throat> light. It's got a, a battery in it, but I can also use my external battery, which I'll show you in a minute, 
in conjunction with the pedal cell that I told you about to uh, keep that going all day in flash mode or whatever, and it works out pretty well that way. Um, this front bag here has lots of different, excuse me a minute, has mostly diabetes supplies in it. I'm type 1 diabetic. And, uh, it makes journeys like this all the more challenging. I'm gonna take the stuff out and lay it on the bed so you can see what's in there. All right, here's all the stuff that was in that front bag. So basically what we have here is, uh, this is a, a glucose monitor uh, where, and some alcohol wipes and some finger, finger uh, sticks. So basically uh, I prick my finger, I put a little bit of blood on a finger stick, put it in the machine and it tells me what my, my blood glucose levels are. Fortunately, I don't need to use that unless my ex, my uh, constant glucose monitor or CGM fails. <clears throat> so that's, that's just backup. But um, these are my Dexcom devices. These are um, what I wear on my body. Uh, I don't wear this whole thing. It's just a little sticker here. And then a tiny little battery that sticks to that, that sticks to my body, that uh, gives information to my phone about what my blood sugars are. That works in relation with my insulin pumps. I have to change out insulin pumps every three days. I have to change out the Dexcoms every 10 days. I just changed an insulin pump and a, and a Dexcom out yesterday, so. Uh, this is a backup device. This is a PDM for my insulin pump. Sorry, uh, this is a PDM for my insulin pump. I actually carry one of these in my jersey at all times. This is a backup one. It's basically the size and weight of a cell phone. So I'm essentially carrying like three cell phones with me, size and weight wise, um, to make this system all work. Uh, this is Baskimi. This is if my blood sugars get super, super low, I can open this up and uh, spray this up my nose and it uh, raises my blood sugars immediately and that's for an emergency as well. Uh, this bag here is kind of random stuff. It's got some toothpaste in it, some syringes, uh, some needles uh, for my backup long-acting insulin pen and a couple of uh, salt pills which I could have used the other day forgot they were in there and then this guy here is just uh, uh, for my new headphones uh, different size earpieces that I'm holding on to for now all right that does the front bag moving right along the next bag would be this top two bag it's a bag that I bought from tailfin and uh, I really like it because it's small. Uh, it's, it's great because it's small and it's also not great because it's small, but I find that the larger bags are generally wider and they get in the way of my knees. And without noticing what I'm doing, I tend to ride with my knees further apart so they don't rub the bags. And I develop knee pain. Um, and this one's just narrow enough that it, it kind of is right in line with my, my frame bag and it doesn't give me any issues. Um, I think Tailfin makes some great stuff. I know that uh, in the past we've tried to carry Tailfin and, at MTCX and uh, they're a direct to consumer only company, which uh, is a bummer for the modern day bike shop. Um, so anyway, uh, I couldn't find anything I liked as much as this, so I just went ahead and bought it, bought it from them. In here, I have uh, <clears throat> the case, the case for my new headphones, and then I have that little tripod in here as well. It folds up pretty small. It's a quad lock selfie stick slash tripod, and uh, I like it. Um, the, I have the same issue with that as I have with this guy here, 
in that it's not easy to take the phone on and off and use it while I'm writing. So anyway, I usually have to stop and make that happen uh, instead of like, you know, crashing. So it's a trade off. The next bag, let's tackle this uh, big old frame bag here. I have uh, <clears throat> this left side is basically like a map pocket. It's kind of a, a flat pocket. And in it, I have an inspirational card that my wife hid in my luggage on my way out, which is super sweet. And uh, I've read it a couple times. I'm not gonna even open it right now, but thank you, Emily. I'm holding on to it. I have a heavy duty Ziploc waterproof bag uh, for something if I need it. Uh, I have uh, for my glasses, swipe off my glasses with, and I have a Kindle. I brought a Kindle with me. Um, haven't actually used any of that stuff yet, except the card. Um, and then I generally have my wallet in here. I have my clip-on sunglasses in here. And that's it on this side. Moving to the other side. All right, on this side, I have my new spare tire, which I'd really, I'd really like to find a new home for this may be either in my front bag or my rear bag but it does take up quite a bit of room so anyway I haven't figured that one out yet it's a work in progress I have some food uh, some nutrition I'm sure everybody's gonna love that I got some comments about my nutrition Instagram post I, I hear you I do I have a uh, some more salty food. This guy here is all my electronics. It's so this is what was in my electronics bag. I have all my different cords here. I have a total of eight different things I have to keep charged, believe it or not, uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. Part of that is my own fault for doing SRAM access, wireless derailleur shifting stuff, uh, but I love it. Uh, so that's what all this stuff is. This is a charger for the battery. These are the two extra batteries and then one of the cords is in here. Uh, these are the anchor, well, I don't know what they call blocks, but I can plug it into a, an Edison plug and then uh, have a USB uh, 2.0 and a lightning, or I don't, I don't know what those are called now, but anyway. I have to have all these different cords to charge everything, believe it or not, which, which uh, anyway, that's just the way it is. Also, I, I, you know, I have these wireless headphones, and then I have a phone and a PDM for my, uh, my diabetes stuff. And then, in addition to that, I have this, uh, this very cool Garmin uh, radar light, I forget what they call it now, but it actually connects with my, my Wahoo up front and it gives me a graphic of cars coming up behind and it beeps if I wanted to, which I think is fantastic. It's really, uh, helped me on this trip at times and other times I have to turn the volume off because the cars are just too constant. And then this is my Garmin inReach. And so, um, yeah, I have a lot of stuff to keep charged. Um, moving on, this, this guy here is part of the pedal cell. So the, the power is generated here from the pedal cell. It gets to this box in here, and then I can plug um, a, a higher powered light a thing into here, like a battery or a light into this other side, and it keeps it keeps things charged. Um, I also have another cord here. This thing has just always been kind of a cluster, and 
another reason why I'd like to get rid of the pedal cell if I can, because it's taking up extra room in here. This is a pass-through battery. It works awesome. So I can uh, charge this battery with my pedal cell, and then at the same time, plug something in here and have this battery charging something else. Uh, so pass-through technology is awesome. And I think I bought this, I bought this on Amazon, but they sell them at hefe.bike as well. Uh, I think that's a pretty good company, J-E-F-E dot bike. Might be something to check out. I had two of these on the Tour Divide last year. One of them froze and uh, didn't ever work again, but this one, this one's still kicking. It's been around for a while now. I have some sunscreen. <coughs> I have my toiletry kit, which is basically a toothbrush, toothpaste, dental floss, um, some, some ibuprofen, uh, some tea tree oil for my butt uh, when things start getting raw, and some chamois cream and a little container of Calmo Septine. Calmo Septine is like a pink, really thick diaper rash stuff that um, you don't want to put on right before you ride because it's thick. You need to let it soak. It's good to put it on like at night when you're going to bed to help keep things nice and uh, nice and nice and working well in your undercarriage. This is my tool my tools, all my tools. So I have a, a wolf tooth pliers. I have a tiny little Leatherman. I have uh, like extra valve stems. I have uh, tire plugs. I have anything you can think of basically. Extra chain links, a chain breaker, my multi-tool, a little rag chain lube, wolf tooth uh, chain lube. I love that stuff. Um, on the front of my wheel here, I have a valve core tool. Um, I have my newly acquired uh, bicycle tube patch kit in here. Uh, all the stuff, all the stuff, okay. That's it for this. Oh, I have my pump in here. My pump generally is hanging up on the top. There's some Velcro straps up here, but I have my pump. This is a tried and true um, pump. It's kind of big, but it works really well. Made by Topeak. This is 20 years old, maybe. And um, I don't take it on all my rides, but it's on this one and it's lasted a while. Uh, there's two different colors of Gorilla Tape here, and I used a little bit of the black Gorilla Tape the other day to put on this 3D printed device for my um, Garmin uh, because I was riding on a bumpy surface and it actually fell off, so I put a piece of tape on there so it can't, it can't come off anymore. It's always good to have tape. Okay, and then getting close here, down at the bottom, uh, there goes my, my Sea to Summit day pack. Super small, um, just in case. I need to load up on something, food and water and that kind of stuff, and I don't have room in my frame bag, I can just throw it on my back. I have my auto lock uh, to keep the honest people honest doesn't do much else, but uh, slows, slows people down anyway. Uh, this is a Frio pack full of uh, one vial of insulin. And this is this stuff, this is like uh, those, those cooling things that you can put, you can soak in water and put around your neck and it works by evaporative cooling. You can't let insulin get too warm. So I use the Frio packs for that. I have another much larger one here that has two bottles of those that insulin. 
and then uh, I have two bottle, bottles of insulin here and then I have an insulin pen in here, a long acting insulin pen. So it's a backup to my backup to my backup. Um, if, if my insulin pump fails and <clears throat> the syringes that I, you, I brought are all used up and I have to resort to long acting insulin to regulate my blood sugar, I can use that insulin pen. Um, and then I have a large bag of uh, water, 1.5 liters of water here. I'll do my best to. All right, I have 1.5 liters of water here. And then I have my two inner tubes. I have two inner tubes in here. And then I have um, spokes and zip ties. And the spokes are ones that, uh, extra ones that came with the hot wheels and nipples. Um, so I know they're gonna work if I need them. So we are almost done here. I just have one more bag to go. This is my newest bag. Well, this and my, my top two bag are my newest bags. But this one is really awesome. It's the Revelate Spine Lock 10 liter. And uh, for those of you who have used bags like this before, you know that um, they can waggle, they can move back and forth from side to side, especially when you're standing up pedaling. And it can really affect the handling of the bike. It can cause just a lot of additional energy expelled. And man, this thing is awesome. So it's got a bracket that actually bolts to the seat rails here. Um, and that makes all the difference. And I'll, I'll show you how it works. We're gonna, first we're gonna loosen this up here so both sides okay you undo the strap around the seat all this stuff is done is more easily done with two hands and then you pull this strap Actually, you take these these two straps all the way off, and I just loose, loosened up. And then you pull you pull this pin out, and I'm gonna try to do it one-handed. So you pull the pin out, and the whole thing just comes off. It's awesome. I'm gonna set that on the bed, and I'll be right back. So that's what the bracket looks like when the pack's not on it. It's not super big and clunky. I think they did a really good job with it, actually. These bolts are, you're supposed to tighten them up to seven Newton meters, but I have titanium rails on this saddle and it made me a little nervous. I tightened them up to five. I haven't had any problems. Okay, so here's the Revelate Design Spine Lock 10 liter bag. Uh, first of all, it's got this valve here, and <clears throat> when you are loading everything up, cinching everything down, you open up the valve, and it allows air to escape through there. Uh, if you've ever, uh, you know, used a dry bag, you know what a challenge it can be to get all the air out, and this thing just makes it super easy. All right, let's go through what I have in here. So, this is all my clothes, basically. Um, generally, when I'm riding, I have all this stuff that I have on in this bag. So, I have chosen to go with the ultra lightweight uh, Fit Kicks shoes. 
These I bought on Amazon, and uh, they worked out great. I took them on a tour divide last year. Uh, many bike paths and trips. Um, you know, they're not great for river crossings and that kind of stuff, but I've been uh, <coughs> cruising around Arizona in them quite a bit, and they're pretty comfortable. And they're, they pack down to almost nothing. And I have a size 12 and a half foot, and so, uh, you know, carrying an extra pair of shoes is a really big deal. Speaking of which, <coughs> these are my, my new touring shoes. And they have worked out awesome. They're made by Lake. I don't know the model number. I've looked. They're not on here anywhere. But um, they're full laces, as you can see. They are, are a pretty chunky sole. Uh, and I have my Time Attack cleats on here. Uh, they've worked out awesome. They, you know, they, the, the sole does flex a little bit. You know, when I stand up the pedal in particular, I can feel the, the sole flexing, but it's not uncomfortable and I'm not in a race environment, so I don't care about like loss of a couple watts here and there. I can get off and I can walk around comfortably in these two. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have not brought my fit kicks with me and just worn these all the time. But I really like having uh, a really lightweight, comfortable pair of shoes, slippers almost, to, to kick around in when I'm not on a bike. So anyway, um, these are great. I, uh, prior to this, I had the Pearly Zumi X Out Summit, I believe. And those are, those are nice too. Um, they didn't fit as well as these fit me. Um, I have a pretty narrow foot and I just have the regular width. These also come in a wide and an extra wide. If you have wide feet, that might be an option. Okay, so I have an icebreaker wool shirt on. I have a 10 year old Columbia nylon pants that zip off in the shorts. So I have the bottom half of these pants in here. Uh, I love these. I, I was looking to replace these before this trip um, and I couldn't find any. Got back home and I tried these on again and I'm like, why am I trying to replace these? They're perfect. So um, I went with it. My wife did um, take in the, the bottom of the leg for me so that I can ride and not worry about the pant leg getting caught in the chain um, or get grease on them. And so they're, they're totally dialed now and they're close to 11 years old. And um, I've taken these on many bike packing trips. I also have a pair of icebreakers wool underwear on and I'm not gonna show you those, no, no cause for alarm, but they work great too. And wool is nice because you know, it doesn't get stinky real fast. This is a synthetic Patagonia shirt uh, for when it gets hotter and I don't wanna wear the wool one. Uh, this does get stinky faster, um, but you can wash it out. I wash it out in the shower with shampoo and it, so far so good. Uh, this is my NTCX jersey that I wear on the bike. Thank you, Sean. Sean Radley, NTCX. In the back, and generally in the middle pocket, I'll put my PDM for my uh, my my insulin insulin pump, and then sometimes my phone in the back as well. And when I go into stores, I'll throw my wallet in in there, take it out of my frame bag, throw it in there with my phone, and I'm, and I'm good to go. <coughs> um, my shorts, I use a very basic pair of Rafa shorts. I'm not a big fan of bibs on a trip like this, uh, especially when it's super hot. Um, and these don't have like a real fancy chamois or anything. They're just a nice padded chamois. And uh, they've, they've worked for me for the last couple years on these bigger adventures. Um, someday along this trip, it's gonna rain. 
I'm sure of it. This is a company called Ground Break, uh, Ground, Ground Effects, Ground Effects out of New Zealand. These are my three quarter riding pants, rain pants. The great thing about these is they go down really small, uh, they pack down really small. Uh, when I'm wearing them, they go down to about just below my knee, um, and they shed water really well. They're, they're, uh, they've been a great purchase. This, these are leg warmers, wool leg warmers, also made by Ground Effects. Um, with, when I'm, when I'm wearing my rain pants, I can put these on as well if it's super cold. And these, when they're on, go down, I have about that much leg showing. If I have longer socks on, uh, basically my whole leg is covered. The socks I've been wearing are these here, made by a sock guy, and uh, nothing super special about them, they just work really well. They're not wool, they're, uh, might be a wool synthetic blend, I'm not sure, but um, they've been good. These are my Rafa uh, wool arm warmers. These, I have been on my favorite product list for a couple years now. They're really thin, they're kind of delicate. Um, my wife has repaired them a couple times, or once for me, at least once for me. Um, but they're great because they're wool, again. Um, you can wear them in a, in a variety of weather. When it gets too warm, you can just push them down until you're ready to stop and take them off completely. Uh, so with the combination of uh, my zip-off pants and my arm warmers and leg warmers, I can have a lot of different, I can go through a lot of different temperature and, and environments and uh, wet, dry, cold, whatever. And garments work for a lot of different things that can uh, These are the, the long finger gloves that I brought, hand up, long finger gloves. They just work and I like the colors. They kind of match my socks. This is my Gore rain jacket. I just uh, retreated this with Nick Wax and it feels nice and slippery again. This has been a great jacket. It's got a hood on it. The hood is big enough. I can put it under my helmet or I can even put it over my helmet. Um, the only thing about this jacket, Gore, is um, next time you gotta make the, the, the wrist cuffs larger because these are just as big as they get and my hands barely fit through. If I have these thin gloves on, I can't get my jacket off. I have to take my gloves off to get my jacket off. So, fix that door. Otherwise, it's great. Uh, getting close here. This is my emergency bivy. I started this trip, I told Tom Robertson, I said, I'm only gonna camp when forced. So, <laughs> this, is about the extent of my sleep kit and this. These two things, that's my sleep kit. This is a blow-up pillow. This is an emergency baby. I hope I don't have to use either one of these. I'd be stoked if I did. But I'll gladly take this much weight just for a little extra peace of mind. Uh, this is the bottoms to my zip-off pants. These are the, the pants part. Um, an extra pair of socks, these are made by Defeat. Nothing special there. This is for when it gets cold and rainy. It's basically just an overglow. It's a waterproof, it's made by Outdoor Research. It's uh, an overglow to go over uh, whatever I happen to be wearing. Keep my hands dry. 
and warm. And sometimes, you know, when you're riding, a lot of times the wind resistance is what, or the, the wind chill is what gets you, and that keeps the wind up. Ah, uh, Patagonia. Patagonia puffy jacket. This is the nano puff, I think. I'm not going to take it out here. But um, I've used this a lot, and it packs down really small. It's fairly thin, but uh, pretty warm. I've slept in this on really cold nights. I've ridden in this a ton. I've used this under my rain jacket a ton. Uh, super versatile. There's no hood on it. Uh, but I do have uh, a wool beanie. A very thin wool beanie made by Smart Wool. Um, the last two things. My helmet, nothing super special about it, except that it fits me. I have these um, giant Spock ears, and I had to find a helmet that fit my, that my, my ears didn't hit the bottom of the helmet, or I didn't have to tuck my ears inside the helmet. This one worked, and it was like 85 bucks, I think. Uh, these gloves, they're super comfortable. They're made by Giro. And it's the second time I've owned up these pairs of this particular model of glove. And it's the second time I've kicked myself for buying them because they're very delicate. Uh, I'm not gonna buy these again. But I like the way they work when they're on. It's just getting them off without ripping them. That's the problem. All right. Um, this video has been much longer than I anticipated. <laughs> it's for the bike geeks only, I guess. Um, bike and bike packing geeks only. Uh, I hope somebody finds it interesting. It was kind of fun to make on my day off. I'm feeling like uh, tomorrow is gonna be a good solid day and I'm excited. I'm gonna be rejuvenated to get back out there and go for it some more. Thanks for watching.